Again. Excitement from the edge of the Everglades. This is Trux and Tractor Power, featuring the all-stars of the four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Mud Racing Series. Today, from Florida Sports Park near Naples, it's the four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Suncoast Nationals. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Lee, and we are set for some short track racing. That's right. When I talk about short track racing, the guys that regularly compete on the NMRO circuit are used to 180 feet pit. But today, because of the smaller area here at Florida Sports Park, the pit has been shortened to 140 feet. But I guarantee you, that will not diminish the action. And here with more on today's competition, my colleague, Army Armstrong. Gary, the scuttlebutt in the pit area, as the drivers are saying, they don't mind losing that 40 feet. As a matter of fact, they kind of like it because the track is soupy. That's 40 feet of mud they don't have to worry about the stone out in front of them that they eventually would have to run through. It's not the case anymore. That's the upside. The downside is the track is real soupy and real wet, and the drivers are spooked about that because it's almost like they know they're going to get hit by a left hook or a right hook because they can't see through this mud to know where the ruts are. They know it's going to catch them. The big question is where and which way is it going to throw them. Back to you, Gary. Well, Army, talk about a star-studded field. I'll take a look at this graphic. There are four men in this field that have won national open titles. Tom Meats making his first trip down here to Naples. And there's a look at Tom Meats, the 1992 Open champion, as he prepares for a ride in Mud Patrol. And there is Ron Pence, the two-time cut tire champion. He drives Tater. And there is a look at Glenn Siebold. Glenn is now staging legal speed. He's the 91 Open class champion out of the state of Georgia. Everybody's going to be keeping an eye on Seabold. They know that he can take a rocket ride down here for them. He may set the pace, Gary. Alongside Seabold will be Skeeter Stroud, the 1992 Pro Stock Division champion from the All-Star Nationals in Phoenix City, Alabama. Oh, look at that Seabold. Look at the shot he laid down. Sitting on the nose cone of a heat-seeking missile. Seabold went to the other end. Look at the time up. 2.09. And Skeeter at 263. Now remember, we've lost 40 feet of mud, so the times will be a lot faster. Well, I can't. Seabold just picks the front end out of that thing and goes. Skeeter made a good run. He just had too much weight to carry. There's the flatliner of Glenn Bowen, 78 Ford Bronco, and there's Ron Pence in Tater. We saw national champion. Exactly. We saw Ron suiting up a moment ago. You know, Ron has real good luck in the Class 5 competition, and the only difference between Class 5 and Class 6 are the tires, but for some reason, this tire combination doesn't seem to work for him. Now, Glenn Bowler is going to be coming out. He's from Florida with the Flatliner. We haven't had a chance to see him run before. I'm kind of anxious to see what kind of time he can turn, Gary. Well, Pez, of course, is a two-time cut tire champion. Oh, he lays down a good one, too. Let's check the time on Tater. Whoa! Hang on, guys. Well, Flatliner just got knocked to skew a bit. 2.23 for Ron Pence. And Glenn had a billiard shot there in the shutdown well, area he did, at 2.31. What happened here? Keep an eye on it. He had a, a throttle stuck on the truck in the, in the left lane of the camera. Pence is out in the right lane, gone. You can see the rooster tail. But as he's shutting down, the throttle sticks on that vehicle. He takes the brakes and pulls the rear completely out from underneath the truck. Wipes out the, the left rear suspension and breaks the axle. Take one more look now. Well, you can hear the impact there. Tag, you're in. <laughs> Doug will uh, clear the track, uh, survey the damage, get prepared for more side-by-side -side mud bogging from Naples, Florida. Welcome back to Florida Sports Park, and there is a look at the Flatliner being towed back to Tittery. Let's check in with our leader now, and here's Army Armstrong. 2.09. That is awesome. That was almost a perfect run. I enjoyed that. The track was beautiful, and everything worked good. Think it'll hold up? Uh, well, I hope it does, but if the track's good out there, there's some good cars left out there. Well, Glenn certainly underscores what we said earlier about the stellar field. And speaking of one of the stars, there is one right there. Tom Meats in the Mud Patrol, a 32 Ford Roadster with a big Keith Black Chevy. He comes from Paxton, Illinois, and always a top contender. No matter how long the pit or no matter where it is. And there is Mike Jones from Titusville. He drives the top dog. A 23 Alter T with a big nitrous injected Chevy. 
Uh, the car in the far lane is giving away some horsepower. That runs the nitrous with the single carburetor. Reed, meanwhile, check this out. Mm. Let's check the numbers now for Tom Means. A 209 is what he needs. A 212. That is good enough for second position. So Tom Means will move into second spot with yep. that 212 clocking. Seabolt just dodged a major bullet as Mike Jones records a 2.27, but Seabolt. He dodged a big bullet right there. Well, next up, Shane back in the Attitude Adjuster. He's a member of the two-second club. He finished second in the 91 NMRO World Championship All-Star Nationals at Phoenix City, Alabama. There he is from Jeffersonville, Kentucky. And there's a look at the back of the Dirty Bird, Gary Osteen. These this is two, a unique creation. Yeah, these two guys have gone at it many, many times all over the country. Osteen, he believes in those old... Blue Oval Bunch Fords. Believe me, he is a die-hard Ford man. Meanwhile, Bach, who's involved in the auto auction business in the Bluegrass State, he believes in that Mountain Motor Chevrolet with a supercharger on top of it. They've raced each other before. They're racing the clock now, but with one guy sitting in the lane next to the other lane, I guarantee you when light goes green, this is what's going to happen. How about it? That was a race. He laid down a number. Hang on there. Shane just does get it stopped before he hits those junker cars parked down there. Let's check the time as we look at Gary Osteen's 216. Still a good run, but not good enough to take the top two spots. A 197. Look Boy, at that. Awesome. Shane back takes the lead. 197. Replay comes up. See, he stays on top of the screen and just skips like a rock over the top of it. Oh, what a picture perfect run. Shane back. Out of the bluegrass state of Kentucky, now takes the lead with a clocking of 197, and here is Army. Well, I tell you what, Gary, I love this sport. I love it. A one-second run, a 197. That had to be a rock and roll good time for you. Real good time. Felt like an awful good run, Army. I, I was real pleased with the run. When you line up next to a guy like who's in a lane to you, does that psych you up to run that much harder? Because you know he's going to be carrying the mail. Does that make just both of you run that much harder? Uh, yes, sir. A lot of times, you know, it's a very competitive sport. You, you want to go out there and give it your all, and it does psych you up quite a bit. Sure does. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't appear to be too psyched up right there. He's rather calm after a run like that. I know, and I'm not that much older than him. He doesn't need to be calling me sir. <laughs> Here's a look at Dylan Johnson. Yeah. He's a gentleman. He's a southern gentleman. What do I expect? He's from Kentucky. Gene Johnson, the Jeep funny car, Mr. Bojangles. And there's a look at Garland Walls, the gambler. And as we uh, showed you the tease, Garland's one who tends to get a little jumpy here in Naples. Garland has had some great moments at this park. There's Garland Walls at 218. That's with a new 27 Ford Roadster. Johnson goes to 287 with the full body fiberglass replica Chevrolet. Well, I tell you, one fast track here in Naples, Florida. You can see the small, tight confines here of Florida Sports Park. The junkers down there, really, for the monster truck competition. Which here, runs. They're using those to, to stop the cars. Exactly, exactly. The current standing showing Shane back with the attitude adjuster at 197, Glenn Seabolt 209 with legal speed, and Tom Means third on the leaderboard at 212 with the Mud Patrol. So we have uh, a look there at Kevin Sprouse, Predator Jeep. He's getting ready. We're coming back. Stay with us. Welcome back to Florida Sports Park in Naples. A good crowd on hand for the Penda four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Suncoast Nationals presented by Ford Trucks. This event is part of the BF Goodrich Performance Series. These jamborees are a great event for the entire family as well as the hardcore truck enthusiast. Yeah, plus, Gary, you always get to pick out your favorite truck. No way, dude. Bad Boy Bart shows up in Naples, but who else is coming around in the bad boy category? Look at here. Showtime is in town. Gene Whitaker, 64 Chevy El Camino with a nitrous injected 327 cubic inch Chevrolet power plant. He comes out of Lake Placid, Florida. Now he'll be going up against another vehicle that is capable of really laying down some shots based out of the state of Michigan. This vehicle goes by the name of Lightfoot. Brand new engine combination. The supercharger's new 
to Bill Oldenwald. He's anxious to try some of this Florida sand out. Remember, we're at sea level, so both vehicles will be making a whole lot of horsepower. The vehicle in the far lane uses rear-wheel drive only. The front wheels are basically slick. He likes to stand it on the back wheels and walk it. But Lightfoot comes out. Talk about walking Whoa. with Lightfoot. And look at Showtime. Showtime almost got upside down. We said Gene Whitaker can be spectacular, and once again, he is spectacular here at Florida Sports Park. In the sport, they call that a Charmin run, Gary, and I tell you what, he really looked good out there. 228, and there was uh, Gene Whitaker's disqualification, but a 228 for Bill Oldenwald. Oh, Showtime almost got upside down. Look at the right lane. Yeah, see, the suspension's loaded to the rear. Once the front end gets up, he's, he's not walking the dog. The dog's walking him from that point on. Well, he had to hang on for a moment and take a real deep breath. Here you are from behind the staging area. Watch the left lane. Watch him lift the front end. And, of course, he's disqualified when he goes out of bounds and almost tucked that right rear and went over. Here's Army Armstrong. That has got to be one of the best rides in the motor sporting world. And you take them quite frequently. Well, I, I got in some ruts there at the start line. I should have backed up and restaged, but not in a hurry. Why two-wheel drive? Well, we're really running a, a bogus four-wheel drive. We're running a golf cart front end with Jeep spindles on it. It just turns the tires when they're in the air. Most of these cars don't really need four-wheel drive because the front tires are in the air. He needs four-wheel brakes, that's for sure, each time he finishes well, a run. He makes good time on the back nine of his local golf course if he uses... <laughs> Daniel Fuchs coming up next in Turtle's door in the near lane, and Tommy Gilder in the Terminator in the far lane. Neither driver able to lay down the shots that they want to. Check the timing now for Tommy Gilder at 2.40, 240 for Gilder, and for Daniel Fuchs at 3.98, so their competition has concluded. They'll put those back on the trailer. Well, Kevin Sprouse will be coming out now with a fiberglass wrap of the CJ6 Jeep body. Howard Racing Engines, a sponsor on the vehicle. He's out of Florida, too, so he should be able to get a handle on this sandy track, Gary. Mike Pausino also coming out in the Race Master chassis. That's a 1993 rear engine dragster. This is an experimental setup, and these guys out of Nolan can rocket ride with you. How do you say Harvard. that? Nolan. Nolan. That's the way they say it. I say it New Orleans, <laughs> but I was talking uh, to them. They said, we're from Nolan. I just say Cajun country. There you go. Well, let's see if this rear engine configuration can work here in Naples. It's a whole new idea. They believe they got a fit. Oh, they oh, do. Oh, man, he has some <laughs> cooking there. Hang on, though. Oh, upside down. Two, three barrel rolls. A fine run, but in the shutdown area, he took three barrel rolls. 191, one, Gary. Nine, one. But a costly ride at that. 191 and a triple barrel roll. So that could be the case of winning and being spectacular. Awesome. I will give him high marks for his artistic ability to roll that thing three times after going through with a 191. That was awesome. Mike Pausina in the right lane. There's the shutdown area. It turns to his right. The left side tucks and does three barrel rolls over the hood of those junk cars. And the roll cage is intact, and he climbs out with both hands in the air. He is okay. There's a big smile on his face. Now he'll survey the damage on the car, but what a wild ride start to finish. A Gary, that's a new record. A 191's a new record, Gary Lee. And he has just been told that a new track record at this distance, 1.91. In 20 years of covering motorsports, I have never seen a driver this ecstatic after barrel rolling a car three times. Look off to your left. Very, very slick in that shutdown area. One, two, over the third time. But the roll cage holds. He's all right. And let's go down now and visit with Mike Fosina. Mike, I know the safety crew's talking to you. Let me grab you real quick. Are you okay? I'm fine. I'm just so happy. We've been working so long and hard trying to get this car running and proving everybody we can do it. I'm just so happy. I ain't even worried about flipping a car. No, we just set a new record. I can't ask for any more. I'll tell you what, the crowd loves you. We're going to let you get out of here. I'm glad you're all right, but I think your actions, your crew members' actions say it all. It's a great to be number one. Yep, it sure is. Thanks, Army. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we go to break, let's take one more look in real speed as the uh, celebration continues down there in the shutoff area. That will be a tough mark to beat. We'll see if anybody can top that when we return to Naples, Florida.
Welcome back to Florida Sports Park in Naples as Ford Trucks presents the Penda four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Sun Coast Nationals, part of the BF Goodrich Performance Series. Our current standings, what a ride for Mike Pausina. 1.91, a new record. Shane Back now is second at 197, and Glenn Seabolt third in legal speed at 2.09. We look now at Bill Hazelwood in the Mud Spider. We talked about a star-studded field. Well, Hazelwood finished second in both the 93 cut and paddle tire categories out of Sherman, Texas. Now, who are we going up against? A blown 502 cubic inch Chevrolet engine. Don Cooper driving a little beaver. But one thing about Hazelwood, the leader right now is from Louisiana. As Cooper's picture comes up on the screen, just a thought. Louisiana's first, Kentucky second, Georgia's third. This guy's from Texas. Texas don't like to be not in the top three. Let's see what Hazelwood's going to do here. Is this a prediction? It's a prediction. Okay. Because he knows the, the track is there. The man in front of him just won a 191. Let's see what's going to happen. Oh, that's pretty. Let's check the numbers. Hang on. You're getting close to those tires and the uh, cars down there. Hazelwood at 201. That's a number. That would be third quick. 201. Or the mud spider. But Don Cooper, a little beaver, he made a good run, but the big problem for him seemed to come at the end of the track when he had to sink those beaver teeth into our crushed cars. Yeah, he almost got the crushed cars. Let's go trackside and talk to Don. Racing the track is one thing, but you got to race the shutdown area too here. You had your hands full. Yeah, Army, I'm building so much speed uh, on the other end. I'm a little slow out of the hole, but I'm building a lot of mile an hour, and uh, that shutdown we have is just not enough area, especially with the cars at the end. We got to try to dodge the cars, get it stopped, and go in the center. And I had it sideways, and I had to throttle a little bit, try to get it back through. But I ended up bumping uh, two of the cars there and busted one tire, but we made it out okay. So everything's looking pretty good. Thank you. Well, once again, that underscores the tight confines here at Florida Sports Park because they have the, the mud pits plus the monster okay. truck track as well. As we take a look at another unique creation, Mike Thomas in a rear engine power pro. This is called the Mad Max. He's out of Grovetown, Georgia. Now, Gary, when we open the show, this is one of the names that you brought out as being a heavy hitter in the sport. He'll be going up against Richard Hayes out of Orlando, Florida in the Midnight Madness. But Thomas has been around this sport for quite a while. His father is in the sport. He's in the sport. He's a class individual. He's got a good running car in the right lane, and he lays down a good oh, shot, Gary. Let's check it out. Hang on, Mike. He gets her woed. Let's check out the time. 2.04. With Ordinarily an excellent time, but not today. Yeah, with antlers. A 204 with antlers. <laughs> you explain that to me. Uh, Santa Claus can explain that one. Reindeer can fly, and he was flying on that one. The reason he flew, he started on the left side of the track and went across corner. He ran from left to right, Gary. Well, let's go down to the track in the pit area and talk to Mike Thomas. Mike, a 204. Now, believe it or not, that's good enough for only fourth spot in this field. This has got to be one of the toughest racing fields gathered anywhere. It is, Army. All these cars today, anybody's liable to win. You know, it's just the luck of the draw and the track and all that right there. You know, you just got to, you know, run as good as you can and hope you get in there. The car tore the chain drive up when they were running two-wheel drive, so I was just glad to even get in the race today. Here's a look at Al Sevens, the previous Class 5 Suncoast Nationals winner. He drives the Rapid Transit. This will be our final pair this afternoon. Kimball Shiles and Pony Express in the far lane. The far lane car might have a little bit of problem with handling. The near lane is longer. Longer wheelbase seems to be more stable. The far lane is a shorter wheelbase car, and for any problem, you can have, you don't want to have it in a short wheelbase car. Let's see what's going to happen. Sevens look good. Well, the times will not be fast enough to overhaul Mike Placina's record time. There's a 216 for Al Sevens, and Kimball comes in at 225. You're going to see what I'm talking about. Keep an eye on the right lane to 225. Now, watch the front end of the car. All right, track side, Kimball's with Army. Gary, it's amazing in a motorsport that's so brutal. It's a finesse sport, too. Let me ask you a question. On the run you just made, when did you know to back on the throttle? If you had in the back when you did, you'd have gone right on over. Well, you stop seeing treetops, it's time to back out. That sums it up pretty good. <laughs> and summing up the final leaderboard, our champion here in Naples, Mike Faustina, with that course record 191. Shane back second, and Bill Hazelwood was third. Well, our congratulations to Mike Faustina. He is now standing by with Army Armstrong in victory lane. Gary, we keep telling you this sport is growing in popularity. Well, this is exactly why. Folks at home today, you got to see a world record, and they threw a flip in on top of it. Mike, congratulations. That was awesome. Thank you. 
I didn't want to have to flip it to set a record, but I'm glad I set the record and I proved we can build a good car, even if it's a rear engine one, and we proved that rear engine works. And I'm just glad we took first place and set a record as while we did it. Congratulations to you and the crew. We'll let you get back to them right now. Thanks again. Thank you. Would you believe that a single former NMRO title member we talked about earlier in the show cracked the top three? Now here's word of an exciting new video offer from Diamond P Sports. Bring the excitement of monster truck and mud racing to your living room with the addition of Diamond P's latest home video. Believe me, folks, third time's a charm. Shake, battle, and roll number three. It's all new and all you come to expect, from the outrageous mishaps of the monster truck racing to the raucous rampage through the mud bogs. Shake, battle, and roll three is a must for any and every monster truck fan in the house. Over 60 minutes of jarring and pounding mud and mayhem and accelerated aerobatics you don't want to miss. To get your copy of Shake, Battle, and Roll 3, call 1-800-438-8585 or send 1995 check or money order plus $4 shipping and handling to the address shown on your screen or charge it on your MasterCard, Visa, or Discovery card. Call 1-800-438-8585 or Shake, Battle, and Roll 3.